All right, welcome to uh, to the info session and webinar on on the satellite engineering and electroelectronics uh, course with myself, Cole Lutz, and Mr. Terry Trevino here. Howdy. Yeah. So we've prepared uh, a short presentation that that we can. Uh, think through and, and and talk through and then have an open discussion afterward uh, after 10 or 15 or so minutes. So Tara and I, uh, we've, we've been on this, this mission to, uh, to really understand electromagnetism and how it relates to satellites and spacecraft and electronics. And so we're co-hosting this, this course spacecraft engineering and electromagnetronics next spring. Um, primarily online and as a, a really a immersive research based course uh, where we can learn to design, build and operate a spacecraft beyond Earth orbit based on the principles of electromagnetism. And it, it's, we think it's, uh, Thanks to Terry we, and, and our team at Magnetospace, we have this really unique opportunity to, um, to design and build this, this mag set, this, this 1.5U cube set, and, and hopefully launch by 2024. Um, and yeah, and here's, here's the timeline here. Uh, the open house webinar today and a November 27th application deadline and the application web page here. And so the one credit course costs $400 US and is going to be around uh, up to five hours per week uh, in, in, in kind of these small class, uh, small classes and, and some exciting labs. Terry, if you want to share more. And, I think this is a, a great opportunity for really, um, I can also you know, throw a bunch of cameras on and we can actually go through the, you know, the building process as well. Uh, I do think initially, right, we're going to be more immersive, but as we start spinning up, not, uh, not on an unintentional, um, play on words there, as we start spinning up the, um, you know, the building of the device. It'll be pretty cool to you know participate and and get everybody's uh, you know a bird's eye view of what we're doing, and I'm I'm excited about that. So this, we're gonna spin to the next uh, page here. Uh, so we're planning to coordinate uh, and a lot of uh, well accomplished guest speakers and advisors who who will help help us through the design and, and the math and the models of the engineering and the subsystems and really how this how this bus comes together uh, and so dr jen Tomel is the head of the cubesat lab at the university of luxembourg and um, gavin is is uh, the test lead at blue canyon and, and steven designed this uh, stnm nano oscillator uh, for for uh, spin torque measurements and, and Dr. Terry Rector here is a, a senior project leader at the Aerospace Corporation and I, I think of him as kind of uh, you know one of the one of our co-founders here and and people Definitely. who are very instrumental toward what we're doing. <laughs> I don't think we would have gotten this far without his direction and leadership. Yeah. So Terry's going to join us as well um, through the and, and time in throughout the course. Uh, and so here's our our, our schedule of the um, of of the course, kind of starting with a uh, general background and. And really learning more about uh, this, this force of electromagnetism and how systems um, are, are operated and, and influenced in, in space. And 
with a strong principle on, on, on the on applied math uh, and how it relates to what we're doing and a deeper dive into the really the quasi particle and, and, and what's going on on an on a atomic level uh, to help outline a foundation of knowledge for the uh, for the electronic subsystems, materials, and, and, and power systems, and and then scale up toward the larger subsystems, and we, you know hopefully get toward the, the software, the TTNC command data and handling, and and really uh, the outlining the mission, how the subsystems relate to the mission uh, objectives and data measurements and um, and operations. And uh, yeah, I think one of the things, Cole, that <clears throat> that that we can also bring is um, you know an understanding of how we can use off-the-shelf software to uh, to kind of understand the um, uh, for me <clears throat> to understand the magnetic moments and uh, and those vectors and where they lie in that field. I think that is a, a fascinating discovery that we made <clears throat> just based on using the magpie um, discovery well, discovery in of we found the software. But uh, and then understanding how those uh, magnetic moments work. That was for me, that was eye opening. So I'm looking forward to you know, walking through that as well. Yeah, same. I think uh, it's really like an exciting puzzle. <laughs> and and hopefully we can harmonize these these labs, um, you know, with the with the topics here you know each each week and kind of you know brainstorm how the labs could potentially how the lecture before the labs each week might um like synthesize and come together yeah i i think it's important to emphasize that, that this is because it won't be a massive class right it'll just be a only a few of us, it'll be really uh, quite interactive. I, I'm, and I'm, I really enjoy learning in that environment. I think for me, even at this level, right where I'm at now, I still feel like a smaller um, cohort seems to get more done, right? Um, we had 30 and 40 people in there. It might be a little more challenging uh, only because, you know, it's difficult to kind of, you know, um, make comments, et cetera. But uh, I don't know. We've got a bunch of people that look like they might be interested in signing up. So we'll see. I think um, we don't have a slide on here, but throughout the course, we can each do like a research project. And it'll be interesting to see how that, that journey th throughout the topics um, comes in in, in each class. And, with kind of culminating in these kind of how the research you're doing contributes to the CubeSat mission and and the overall mission. And hopefully we can physically build this system next spring with Terry. It'd be nice to have his input. I'm you know, he said he was going to free himself up a little to help us, but um, I think we'll have his full attention just a bit later in the spring. So that was more about the course there. And the next slides are more about the, uh, the environment and the, and the spacecraft, a glimpse into the spacecraft and the principles. Um, the environment, we're, we're focusing on these four power challenges beyond Earth. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, so we have these, you know, thermal cycles, these, 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 uh, in, 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 in Earth orbit and, and beyond. And then there's also this ionizing radiation. There's a lot of factors in influencing um, the, the, these, the power loss um, with, with, 
with the batteries and the, and the solar cells. And, and But then there's also, you know, the farther out you go, the more we get into this um, go beyond Earth's magnetic field and into this kind of near null magnetic field environment that, uh, that throughout this course, we're going to try to uh, understand the effects, the potential effects on the power systems and electronics. I say I'm going to say something real quick about this. Uh, this image, even though it's a bit, um, uh, it's a bit, it's not sharp, it's not vivid. But I think there's a reason for that. And it, for me, when I see this image, I see that plasma field just before um, you know the first Van Allen belts. And and to me, I want to mimic. I want us to mimic that, and and that's that's going to take you know a balance of power. It's going to take a balance of uh, where we are in location, as you're mentioning, right? As we move out into NNMF, um, NNMF, that's hard to say three times fast. Uh, I, I think it will be fascinating to, to know what that wattage is that we'll need and the number of amps we think we can provide in order to reach that wattage in order to create that plasma field. Because ultimately, that's where we're really protecting an environment as, as, as to what we're looking for and protecting it from those solar storms and those GCRs and the alpha beta particles. Um, I'm excited to get to that. Um, it's not a number that no one, no one knows right now. And the reason nobody knows is because no one has done this. This will be the first time that anybody has ever built something that goes out into and outside the Van Allen belts to understand how how solar radiation and ionizing radiation affect these, these electronics and these batteries. So cutting edge, absolutely. We are, we are on the forefront of cutting edge stuff here. And unintentionally, right? We weren't initially thinking we were gonna get to this point, Cole. And it's, in, it's desperately exciting. And the more I speak to it, as I have over all these different you know, events that we've been to lately, I'm very excited. So just, Wanted to get my two cents in there. Sorry. I think uh, if we can track these 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 vacancy defects between the crystal lattices, I think um, we can begin to differentiate the potential effects uh, as well. Yeah. Um, and then throughout this kind of this journey we're going on, this crazy journey, it's uh, and and this course we're gonna we're gonna each we can imagine ourselves as electrons, and we can think about well well you know which one of us is spinning in the right direction and who's spinning in the wrong direction. <laughs> so, And really trying to understand uh, understand this phenomenon in uh, you know in space, but also on Earth. So here's a here's a um, follow up question. What are the systems? materials and design of an electromagnetically enhanced satellite. I'm rebooting my computer, sorry. Okay. And it's kind of like what we're trying to get at throughout the course too, is trying to understand the answers to these questions. Feel free to uh, put your answer in the chat there. Or... or try to answer verbally or uh, for 
Let us know afterward. Yes. I think it's important to remember here, um, these EM fields that we're, we'll, we will be working in don't necessarily interfere with many of the systems that would traditionally be on um, a, a typical bus, right? If you start building a bus that has and works in the same frequency ranges that we're, we're going to be operating in, basically you're just repeating what we're doing. I, I, I'm fascinated that we're going to be able to work in a frequency range in the 50 Hertz range approximately that won't, you know, um, interfere with any comms to speak of, and certainly won't interfere with any of, um, any of the, uh, um, you know, recordings, anything. It's um, another thing that I was quite surprised about when we started doing this research is that we, we weren't uh, going to have an interfering environment. We'll still be able to do all of the work we want to do. Um, so I wanted, I, I hope everyone keeps that in mind, right? And, and I hear that pushback a lot. I know Cole and I have heard that several times over the past couple of years now. Uh, we'll, we'll be in an environment where we shouldn't have to worry about that, but I want to test that. And I want to test that numerous times. We, we need to make sure about that. Yeah, and maybe this, this could be um, like a, we could each write like a paragraph or something on this, I think. Uh, and culminate in some kind of, uh, some kind of study. Um, so I guess we, to answer the question, we'd start with what's, what's already in satellites and the subsystems and, and, and try to work from there based on what we know about how electrons spin and flow and, uh, so, you know, from I'm really modeling these is just electrons, their 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 lifespan, you know, and 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 it just flow throughout the system and how that relates to the orientation of the field and um and in this in the satellite. And so this next question is how would these electromagnetic fields interact with the batteries, electronics, and solar systems? That, that being primarily the electromagnetic fields in Earth orbit, but then secondarily the electromagnetic field on board the spacecraft, and, and even perhaps outside of our Van Allen belts, right? We we want to think through that as well. I'm I'm deeply fascinated with wh where we will end up as as we create this field. Um, where it will propagate to, how it returns, the amount of time that it takes to return, are there perturbations that might happen outside of the environment of this of the bus itself and the satellite that we can use as a fingerprint uh, for maybe something that might be going on in that in immediate environment. Um, but I think that's where we start thinking about how we might work outside of the um, of the Van Allen belt and or belts, excuse me. <clears throat> I. I'm, I think there are some improvements we can make on our design as well. And, you know, the UHF antenna, we can work through that. There are some subtle, small things that we might be able to uh, enhance. Um, you know, I have that. Were we one and a half U on this as well, Cole? One Q, a Q1. Okay, sorry, I see that. Yeah, I think, yeah. That's the that's what you have over there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have my one and a half here. So, 
10, 20, so 10 CN, 20 CN. And, um, you know, it has to have all the special coatings. We should all think through that. And, uh, yeah. Hawaii Space Flight, they got their, they were happy to have theirs. <laughs> information on our satellite that was funny really trying to pack all of these subsystems into that into that shoot box there it's gonna be tight and again right to your to your question how will these work together um you know what is it that we will have to um on, on the PCB, uh, you know, or PCBs in this case, you know, what is it and how do we align those? Where, where do we put our uh, various systems? And I, I, I don't want to get, I, I want this to be around the size that it is. I don't want it to be much bigger. I really feel like, you know, it's easier for you and I to, and, and the team here to send something up into um, um, on orbit if it's not massive. And so as a test satellite goes, this is a great opportunity to, to work through that. Love this slide. So, you know, one of the things, I, I can speak a little to this. If we enhance this satellite you know, to be um, an, an EM receiver, EM transmitter, electromagnetic receiver transmitter, there are things that we don't, that we just don't know how and what can be uh, done with those fields. Cole and I have, have really worked diligently to understand, are there things that we can do to protect the, the battery components, um, you know, because electrons freely move around quite easily up in and outside of the Van Allen belt, you know, maybe there's a, a, a massive benefit, in my opinion, there is to, to protecting the battery components and the batteries themselves, uh, protecting the, the photovoltaics. And, um, and I think, I think one of the things we're going to get out of this, out of this collective effort that we're going to, to put together is that we can increase the longevity and lifespan of these satellites significantly. And I'm not saying one or two years, I'm saying fives and tens, tens of years. Um, that, you know, of course has tremendous value out in, in the open market. And, you know, those of you who will stick with us and learn how to get through this, and that's, that's going to give you a leg up as it relates to, you know, moving into and building satellites themselves. Certainly make you an expertise level. Yeah, and, and not only that, I think like just electromagnetism is, uh, it becomes a dominant force in microgravity. And, and so it's, you can apply what, what we learn to, you know, to, to tell us sorts of other things too. Like, um, we've taken this deep, electromagnetic magnetic train over the past two years. <laughs> Every, everything from Maxwell's equations to spin hall effect and um, uh, yeah. And so these, these, there's probably a lot of other research goals and objectives here too, but really to characterize the uh, power performance in the near null environment and these low EM field environments with, with, you know, with everyone and then our partners here too. And, and they were, there's uh, probably a, a lot of other people in, in organizations too. Um, yeah, we should speak to that you know, potential NASA partnership um, uh, as many of you might or might not know, um, Cole and I've been, we've been out visiting with, um, ASA, ESA with respect to how, how we can get this device up and running and, and, and relatively quickly, right? We're, we're not interested in sitting on this technology long because there are some other incredible benefits 
of these EM fields that are even not to be discussed here, but you know, eventually we will chat about them. And NIAC, which is the advanced concepts people at NASA have, have said, hey, we're a hundred percent behind you. What do you need from us? Um, as always, we need money. And um, uh, and then recently we've, you know, we've got another ad similar advanced concepts team that's down at, at the Johnson Space Center. And they're also quite keen to discuss how and, and what we're doing, how they can help us. So we've, I, I feel as if we are moving into an environment where we can kind of dictate, hopefully we move, we, we move quickly in this environment, but we can dictate how our technology will work and uh, how much would it cost? <laughs> That's yeah, an unknown number. Uh, I did get an offer from Relativity, uh, Tim Ellis, who's a friend of mine, um, but I think he, he is initially only going to LEO. And um, Adrian, I'd like to see us get up you know, much higher than that. But uh, if we'll take an LEO. I think we can also discover quite a bit of information just at that, at that level. We'd, we'd have to be in the 400 kilometer range. We couldn't be much, anything lower than that. I think we're just, we're not gonna get really good numbers. If we were up above 500 kilometer, <clears throat> Polaris, Polaris Dawn, that's an opportunity we should see if we can't you know, take advantage of. And they're gonna be up there several times over the next few years. But um, anyway, to, to the point, the, um, the help is there and the monies are there. I, I really do think that we, you know, we're, we're going to be uh, leading from the front as it relates to this technology. So um, I'm not trying to overhype this. I, I, I firmly believe that, particularly after these past um, few months of hard work and discussing the product and the project itself. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited too, and glad to, uh, it's really very, very cool to discuss with the uh, power leads at the space mission directorate and, and, and with, with the materials lead too, and um, at, at NASA, at, at Ascend, and uh, I think there's also the um, some near-term grants in 2024. There's the, the NASA CubeSat launch initiative and, and some other programs we're, we're considering uh, for, for uh, more funding. But the, keeping in mind is kind of low-cost, off-the-shelf uh, systems. And uh, so if, if batteries are like the heart of the satellite or spacecraft, then uh, understanding what goes on in the batteries as it relates to electromagnetism becomes ever more important. So th there's this magnetohydrodynamics effects um, whereby the electromagnetic fields, they, they you know, influence the, the electrolyte properties, ion transport and electrokinetics and, um, and, and, and it's just these flow of electrons. And so here this, this figure outlines, um, the, the V vector is the magnetic field and, and the J is the electron electrical flow and, and um, electrical electron density um, and and so they're they're perpendicular here and um, and so this relates to the flow of current and, and ions and so and then here in this one there's uh, the magnetic field is perpendicular to the electrode surface and here it's um, it's perpendicular to the electrode surface uh, as well, where there's this kind of convection current on the surface material and 
really governed by um, a lot of equations and and so there's this magnetic tension and magnetic pressure forces and and these really trying to understand these um, and, and model these these vectors. And so this kind of becomes a an important aspect of the mission in terms of measuring this on orbit. Yeah, it, it, it's a it's also relevant to our work as as we move forward in the um, in the class. It's important to realize that out outside of the Van Allen belt, that these electrons are not as predictable, right? They, they run, they don't run amok, but uh, they're certainly um, more easily influenced uh, and, and thus, you know, bringing, you'll hear me say this o over the months, right? Bringing what we can do here, bringing it with us, that, that, it's almost like, um, I, I said it the other day, it's like bringing a toilet seat with you. <laughs> you're going to need it on the surface of the moon. You might as well bring one with you. Uh, you're not going to be able to manufacture it out of the, you know, regular. So why don't we bring our magnetic field with us? Or, excuse me, in, in this case, the electromagnetic field. And and I think that's that's really relevant here because we know then we are, in, we can influence these these spins uh, you'll hear Cole speak about this a lot too. You know, spintronics is such an important and um, right, overlooked sometimes, right? In the um, in the vacuum of space, it doesn't get a lot of attention. Uh, and um, Fanny heard me say it earlier, right? You 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 don't you don't influence electrons unless, of course, um, you can bring something with you that will influence them. Uh, and or you might get hit by a solar storm that will do it uh, anyway um it's a fascinating endlessly fascinating topic and i, I hope um everybody else sees that as as i do um, you don't have to be a particle physicist either um you know the simplicity of of the spin electronics and excuse me electron spin um i think will be, uh, be a great place for us to get to work Okay. It's going to be a crazy magic school bus. Did I spin, did I spin this all over? <laughs> I, I had my mute on. I had my mute button on, but I did laugh out loud there. <laughs> all right. Cool. Um, well, thanks for listening there, and we're going to have an open discussion. and. Uh, and discuss more about the next steps. Uh, yeah, anybody unmute. Throw. Um, I have a friend who is in the military, and he says, "Throw stones at me." And I'm like, uh, "I'm not going to throw stones at you, but ask any question you have." Um, Adrian, good to see you. Well, good see to see you as well too. Yeah, I hope you're well. <laughs> So I, I give you a positive, guys. Uh, see if uh, all, all our students are in interest. All good, my friend. So what do you think? Electronics, spin, electron. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go put my neck out and say I think, I think this is something that not a lot of people visit about um, when we get into the vacuum of space, right? And. Um, Honestly, I think it's almost theoretically, um, you know, it's probably one of the most important things that we can deal with as we um, as we elevate above the Earth's surface. And uh, we're not going to have that anywhere else, right? There's no place that I can think of other than Titan and some of the other magnetically enhanced fields around other planets, moons. Um, so, it, and, and I don't see us, you know, with a long duration mission to Titan, 
anytime soon. I, I hear 2040s. But um, you know, in the meantime, we're going to the surface of the moon within the next couple of years. Even my son, my son's 15. And today we were discussing, you know, how are they going to do that? Where are they going to land? You know, um, all, the, all the right questions. And, and I said, well, we're not going to go until we have a module that we can put people in that they're safe. So that's, um, that's something also that, you know, we might be discussing in this class just off, off topic occasionally, but uh, there are some things that we can do with these EM fields that, that might actually, you know, enhance and protect our astronaut core um, outside of the Van Allen belt. And you'll hear me say that a lot, sorry, but uh, that's our only means of protecting ourselves from these high energy particles because they're flying at us at 600 plus kilometers per second. And, um, it's hard to deflect them. Watch out, watch out. Yeah, yeah, put a, there's no deflector shield for that, I don't think. Um, oh, no, no, I did see, <laughs> did you see the, um, some of the lunar surface architects are saying up to 10 meter of 3D printed lunar regolith. And I'm like, well, what's, What's the point, right? I mean, well, you, you don't even can't even put a window in a 10 meter building that's just got walls that are 10 meter thick. It's just, you know, I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me. So, uh, what a great place to test, though. Anyway, Fanny, sorry, go ahead. No, I wanted to ask a question. I'm just finishing my uh, BS with a minor in physics, and I'm considering to go to do my master in space system engineering. Can this class be of any benefit for me or can I bring in anything into the class? Because from the slide, it's all like, <laughs> I don't have any knowledge, you know, just the physics part, that's it. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's highly useful for you as you move into whatever program you choose. Um, and, and you're in the Bahamas, so you'll have to be asynchronous which narrows your choices. Um, Not necessarily, right? He, 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 he could be live during the what classes. Time, what time are the classes? We're, we're thinking afternoon Eastern time. Yeah, we're on Eastern time too. So. Oh, cool. Easy. easy. Yeah. Um, actually, better for me too, because um, I've got a, got a large family. I have to move kids around, so it's perfect for me midday. Um, but also it depends on... The team, but, um, yeah, I, I think it's highly useful for you as you move into another program, wherever that may be. Let's say it's let's say you grab a few classes with us, right? That that gets you up to speed. I, I just don't. Mostly, you know, I just want to see if I really love it before uh, yeah. I, I sign into a full, yeah. you know, master of space system engineering and all of that. That's why yeah. I looked into your courses. Because, you know, does that really tick all my box? But I want to make sure that I can contribute properly to your classes as well. Uh, I think any smart person would be able to contribute. Cole, what do you think? Yeah, I think this is like the perfect bridge to like, you know, cost effectively do that, kind of test the waters and see your interest. So. Yeah, that's what that looked like. Okay. And yeah, without spending those ridiculous per yeah. class dollars, right? Um, I, I'm at American Military University, and I teach uh, master's levels and undergrad students, and they're spending eleven, twelve hundred dollars per three hour unit. Um, you know, and so uh, you know, I, I think with us, right, it's a lot more hands on. I, I, I'm fairly convinced that if if you know if you've got that physics kind of base right then the math is simple it's uh this is this is definitely not rocket science uh, and i perfected that rocket equation that took me almost a month just to figure that out um actually it took a little longer than that <laughs> but anyway uh yeah i I think employers will increasingly value the electromagnetism, um, for, particularly as it relates to space. And um, I think down here as well, Cole. I, I, 
I keep trying to bring this back down to earth, right? Because I, it doesn't get a lot of discussion there. You know, everybody talks about gravity and, and strong and weak force, but uh, the EM, the EM field is, is highly influential. Maybe it's a small perturbation as it relates to its, its net effects down here. But um, I, nobody, nobody 100% knows that, right? We know that the, the, our magnetic field is highly influential. But, um, you know, as, and, and what I work on here, so those two devices in the back um, are, are electromagnetic wave generators. And, you know, they're, they're highly useful down here as it relates to um, plants, right? We think about that, right? Cole, you and I've tested those plants and several different types of, you know, leafy vegetables, and they all seem to do much better in a NMF that's stable and, you know, predictable. Um, so that's, that is an interesting side note, right? I think we can bring that down here too, Penny. Cole's right. I think employers, particularly, you know, those of them looking for us as aerospace scientists to go to work for them, you know, are going to say, hey, you know, this is really cool. What can you tell us about it? Right. And, they'll, and you'll get a deep dive into it. I, I'm, yeah. I'm fascinated by it. And um, Sylvester, so yeah, both. We're looking to develop a, uh, a field program, a little gate array. Um, and a whole cube set for the demo. Yeah, I, I think we, you know, the bus is going to be, be the cube, right? So when you're looking at the cube itself, this is the bus, the array come off of, and you know, the, the antenna come, you know, I, I'm not sure about the, the dipole antenna. I, I, I think we might use dipole for other things, Cole. So one of the things that is t TBD is, you know, what is it that we can do that's not necessarily new, but that, you know, maybe there's some other things we can do with some dipoles. Um, magnetically enhance them in some way. I'm, I, I really would like to think through that as this class progresses as well. Yeah, I'm excited. I think uh, it's going to be a fun journey. So uh, I look forward to hearing from you guys and uh, And then in the future, this uh, this exciting space space bus with Terry and everyone. Happy to visit offline. If anybody has any questions, reach out. Cole and I are always highly accessible. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm sure. incredibly responsive there. Um, and then, of course, I think, Cole, you might have our MarsU email there. So you'll be monitoring that. But we're um, easy to get to. You can always, literally, you can always reach me. Uh, depends on where I'm at. But if I'm in the hot crater in the summer, you might have a hard time getting a hold of me, which is what a goal. I have a goal to be up there in the summertime, up in the Canadian Arctic. I hope I get that deal. Anyway. Crossing my fingers. Any other questions? Anybody? Awesome. All right. Have a great week there. It's everyone. Be safe, everyone. Be careful. See you, Chief. <laughs>